Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to center your servos and also install the linkage stoppers for our FT Tenant. Now in this case, we're going to be installing two servos on our fuselage for rudder and elevator. We're also going to be installing two servos for our sport wing or our speed wing. Keep in mind with the FT Tenant trainer wing, it has no ailerons on it. You're not going to need servos for those. The tools we're going to be using is a simple screwdriver, our servo centering tool, our ESC, and our battery. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So centering your servos is an incredibly important thing to do, especially before you install them into an airplane. By centering your servo properly, you're gonna give even deflection both up and down with your servo. Along with centering your servo, you also have the option of putting different servo arms. Keep in mind, the longer the servo arm is, the more travel you're gonna get, but also the less torque or power you're gonna get from that servo. Every airplane that we design will have a recommendation of what servo arm to use and also where to install that push rod onto your servo arm. Today we're going to be showing you how to simply center your servos using a servo centering tool and also how to install the servo arm onto your servo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the servo arm that I want. I'm just going to put this on as a reference here. Now oftentimes servos will come pre-centered but it's very easy for them to accidentally get bumped either in transit or when you're handling them. So I'm just going to simply put this on. I'm not going to put any servo screws on yet. And now I'm going to connect it into my servo centering tool. Now the servo centering tool does have multiple functions here and we'll go through that in just a minute. You're going to notice that there's an in for power and there's an out for output. This specific servo centering tool is a servo centering tool that you get with our Crafty Kit V2. Right next to our out you're going to see an S, a plus, and a minus. S stands for signal, plus stands for power, and minus stands for ground. On our servo connection you're going to see three different colored wires. You're going to see a yellow or orange wire, you're going to see a red wire and you're also going to see a brown wire. In this case, the brown stands for ground, the red is power, and the yellow is signal. Now different manufacturers will sometimes select different color wires. So what you may see is instead of brown, red, and yellow, you may see black, red, and white. In this case, the black will be the ground and the white will be the signal. Now that we know what our wires mean, we're going to connect this in and we're just going to match this up horizontally exactly how the pins show. So in this case, I'm going to slide this in. You're going to see that the signal lines up with the S, the plus in the middle, and the bottom is ground. The easiest way to power your servo connector is just by using your ESC. Your ESC is going to deliver a nice clean 5 volt voltage right to your servo tester. One thing you do not want to do is connect direct battery voltage into your servo tester. You're not only going to destroy your tester, but you're also going to destroy your servo. So in this case, we're going to line this up again. We have our signal, our power, and our ground. Signal, power, and ground. Now that everything's connected, we can take a battery, connect that together, and you're going to notice the first one lights up and that says manual. For manual, when you turn the knob, it's going to move the servo. If we press this button one more time, here I'll go to one extreme here, the servo is going to center for you. One additional press to auto and the servo will pulse back and forth slowly. This is a really good indicator of how much travel you'll have with your servo. What we want to do with this is press this until we go to manual. And from that point, if anything's not quite right, all we simply need to do is install it so it's perpendicular. Now, oftentimes with our servos, what we'll have is we'll have one servo go in one direction, the other servo go in the other direction. That's very common in things like ailerons. And also, if we have a special build where it's really important on which direction the servo goes, we're going to call that out in the build video and let you know. So for example here, I'm going to install this servo so both arms are pointed in opposite direction and neutral. Once everything is centered, the last step and the most important step is to make sure you secure your servo arm to your servo with the servo screw. If you don't do this, this can pop off in flight and that's going to cause your airplane to crash. Selecting your servo screw is really easy. We're going to pick the smallest screw out of the three. We'll use our little multi-tool here and we'll simply screw it in. It's really important whenever you're installing your servo screw, brace your servo arm with your finger so you're not putting all that torque on the gears and stripping it out. Also, don't over tighten your servo screw or you may come into a problem with breaking your servos. One last test and we're good to go. Now if you've been following along with our build videos, you've already learned how to center your servos and at this point we should have four servos that are centered and also the servo arms that we selected are going to look just like this. They're going to have three holes and have a single side. Now the tenant uses four servos. Two for the tail, rudder and elevator, and two for the wings which control your ailerons. These two that are going to control your ailerons, we can put aside, they've already been centered, we have the right servo arms on. These two servos here are going to need something called linkage stoppers. Linkage stoppers are incredibly useful for passing a push rod through, and then you can lock that down with your screwdriver to be able to grip onto that push rod. 
One servo that we have here is going to control our elevator, the other one's going to control our rudder, and because we have different tails that can come on, this is going to make swapping them out even easier. In our kit, we have these included linkage stoppers, and we have the main barrel, the top screw, and the lower nut. Now you're going to notice that these barrels are a little bit thicker than the holes, which means we need to drill these out. These holes are typically meant for a standard push rod to be able to pass through, and simply by taking a drill bit that's the same diameter as our barrel, we can drill it and pass it right through. For this application, we're going to select our center hole. Easiest way to do this is just take this down, press it right on through. Now that we passed our barrel through, we can install the nut on the back. I'm just going to hold this with my finger and turn this all the way to the point where it stops. We're going to go ahead and tighten this nut all the way against the barrel until it stops spinning. Now you're going to notice that this wiggles a little bit and that there's a gap there. That's okay because when the push rod travels through that, that's going to lock it on that access here. We want to make sure that we don't tighten this down to the point where it binds because if it binds and transmits that to the servo, you're not going to get good deflection on your controls and you're also going to break your servo prematurely. A good way to lock down your nut is by simply just putting a small little drop of hot glue on the very back. Our last step is to just thread in our top screw just a couple threads, making sure that we don't put it all the way in or else our push rod won't pass through. All right, our one linkage topper is done. Let's do the exact same process on the other side. For this application, we're going to select our center hole. Easiest way to do this is just take this down, press it right on through. Now that we passed our barrel through, we can install the nut on the back. I'm just going to hold this with my finger and turn this all the way to the point where it stops. A good way to lock down your nut is by simply just putting a small little drop of hot glue on the very back. Our last step is to just thread in our top screw just a couple threads, making sure that we don't put it all the way in or else our push rod won't pass through. At this point, all of our servos are prepared for our FT tenant. Now keep in mind, if you're just starting this project and you're building the trainer wing, the trainer wing does not have ailerons, which means these will go into your sport wing or your speed wing. These two here are going to be installed under our FT Tenant fuselage. Let's go ahead and do that now.